Hello, and welcome to My Little City Homestead. Today, I am making Swedish sweet cardamom bread. A big winter storm was rolling in here while we were visiting family, so we decided to stay cozy and make something warm and tasty. For this recipe, I will be using the bread maker to mix and knead and rise the dough, but I will be using the oven to bake it. For this recipe, you'll need milk, yeast, sugar, softened butter, salt, ground cardamom, eggs, and flour. I just added 3 fourths cup of milk. It works best if it's a little warm. Now I am adding 1 fourth cup of sugar, followed by a half a teaspoon of salt and one and a half teaspoons of ground cardamom. If you want a stronger flavor, you can add up to two teaspoons of cardamom to your recipe. We did on our second batch. Now it's time to add in one whole egg. I'm going to go and wash my hands real quick to prevent some cross-contamination. Here I am measuring out 1 4th cup of softened butter. You can dice it into small bits if you'd like, but for me I was just pinching off little pieces and throwing it in. Next, I am adding three cups of bread flour, making sure not to compact the flour as I put it into the measuring cup. I don't want the flour to be too compacted because then that will make you have too much flour in your recipe. Finally, I am going to add two and one fourth teaspoons of bread machine yeast. It probably would have been better for me to add this earlier in the recipe, and I definitely did it the second time around. Adding it earlier next to the sugar causes the yeast to be more active and allows the bread to rise more effectively. Now start the machine on the dough setting and let it do its thing. And look how pretty it is. Now I am flouring a nice clean surface for me to roll the dough out on and form it into braids. Look how nice and springy that dough is. Here I'm just realizing that, oh, there's flour everywhere, I should probably put my apron on. The next step is to portion the dough out into three equal sections. Now taking each section and rolling it out into a long rope.
don't worry if your ropes don't come out perfectly uniform. I promise you, your bread will still taste absolutely wonderful. Place your strands next to each other and prepare to start braiding them. Pinch the ends together and fold them under to seal them into the bread. If your dough feels a little bit dry and is not sticking to itself well enough, you can always take little dabs of water to help pinch them together. I know I'm not doing it here, but I recommend to either grease and flour your pan or lay some parchment paper down to help release it from the pan at the end of baking. Lightly cover with a towel and let it sit to rise for 10 minutes. I prefer to let it sit on top of the stove while the oven is preheating. To finish off this first loaf, I'm going to take some milk and brush it along the surface and then sprinkle with sugar. Now that it's in the oven, it's going to bake at 375 for 20 minutes. Oh, it looks so pretty. Here is where I wish I would have greased the pan or put some parchment paper down because the milk and the sugar have kind of caramelized to the pan. Oh my goodness friends, I wish you could smell how good this kitchen smells right now. I'm just going to take a moment and put some parchment paper down for the next batch. Oh, it's so pretty. Oh my goodness.
I can't express to you how simple this recipe was, but how elegant the bread looks with its braids. It is delicious and homey and cozy, and I really hope that you can give it a try. I will post the recipe within the description section, so I hope you can check it out. Whoa! <laughs> it just—it really proved. <laughs> Yeah, it's real big. <laughs> Since my oven was still warm from the previous bread loaf, I decided to proof my dough in the oven instead of the machine, and it really expanded. I think because of the way I proofed the bread this time around, it was a little bit more dense. So for this loaf, we ended up using it to make French toast for one of our breakfasts. This was my first time making bread like this, and I hope that it encourages you to try something new too. Oh, look at her. Oh, she looks pretty too. I think this bread was perfect for today. It's reminiscent of the snow outside with the sugar glistening on each loaf, yet it's warm and welcoming and cozy. I think this bread is perfectly paired with a nice warm glass of chai. And if there's any left over, don't be afraid to try it as French toast. Happy baking!